Hey guys, how's it going? We're here with another Erin Talks podcast video thingy. Uh, feel free to just kind of play this in the background, whether you're cleaning or coloring or chilling out or anything. Um, get comfy, get cozy. I am currently at the end of my bed. This is like my little sleeping area, as you guys have seen before. Um, and, you know, my shelves back there and stuff. But I thought that this would be a nice, comfy, cozy place. I'm just going to lower this a little bit more. That's a lot better. And just talk with you guys about my mental health from then versus now. Then meaning five years ago, which is insane to even say that five years ago, I decided to start my mental health journey until now um, and talk about the similarities, differences, um, you know, just everything about it because a lot of people think five years is, you know, such a short time, but at the same time, it's been a very, very long journey for me to get to the point where I am today. And I want to talk about it because I feel like not enough people talk about their story. Um, I feel like more and more people are talking about their story, to be honest. But I do believe that more and more people should come out and be more open about their story. Um, so it helps others. And that's what I'm hoping for this episode of Erin Talks is for you all to gain just a little something from this uh, video or if you're listening to this while doing whatever. Um, if you have YouTube premium, feel free to uh, have me as like a little podcast in the background while you're on your walk or something. And um, let's talk about it. Let's talk about my, this is my personal experience, my mental health then, 2017, versus now in 2023, five years in the making. Wow. Okay. So going back to 2017, um, we have talked about this before. If you guys aren't familiar with my mental health story, uh, feel free to go back to my channel and watch my mental health playlist um, or just any of my Erin Talks videos um, and you can learn more about my story there. But long story short, um, what all this started was I made the really bad non- you know, like literally my whole decision making, I didn't listen to my intuition, I didn't listen to my gut feeling, I just kind of ignored it all for a stranger, essentially, and decided one day that it was okay to run away from home and almost, you know, be in a life with a very un- well man is what I'm going to say um and I basically lost all you know I felt like the world was against me I felt like my family didn't love me I felt like an outcast and I felt very like who cares kind of attitude almost um and it's really hard to talk about, but at the same time, I've grown a lot from that. And, you know, it's a hard pill to swallow when you realize that only five years ago, I, I, I just thought that I could just, you know, throw my life away for somebody I thought was somebody that cared about me in my head that he told me and put all these lies into my head, put all this basically shit into my head and basically lured me in and I made the decision, I guess, in a way to go with it. And my family was very mad at me. My family had a lot of trust issues with me for a very, very long time. Um, it didn't just happen overnight where they were like so forgiving and so, you know, all of that. Like my family, my siblings were super mad at me. Like my parents were mad at me. Everybody was mad at me. Yes, they were worried because obviously I'm like their family member, but they were mad. They were mad at me for the decision that I made and it was a very, very bad decision. 
and long story short I basically for my safety for not only the safety for not having communication with that man but also for the safety to work on my mental health and to stay off the internet and to not be out of my family's sight it was the decision by my mom to completely get me off social media completely you know kind of be under her watch essentially and at that time my mom quit her job at that time um that she loved doing um but I mean like I always say everything happens for a reason so she quit that job to help me which one thing I want to say is if I didn't have my mom by my side like she is my number one person like if I never had her by my side I don't think I would be as far as I am today so mom if you're watching this I love you very much and thank you <laughs> from the bottom of my heart for being by my side the last five years. <laughs> um, oh, I already know I was going to cry during this video, but you know, it's a very touching subject to talk about a very, you know, <sighs> I look back on it and I just see myself and I feel like that me doing that, me making that decision that day was a cry for help and I'm glad that my mom took it as that because she could have just you know I was a grown adult at this time I'm about to be 26 this year so at that time I was 20 I was 20 I was literally about to turn 21 that year so um because this all happened literally the January of 2017 so it was you know I was a full grown adult so my parents could have just easily, you know, given up on me, tell me you're on your own, do your thing. But no, I thankfully have a very loving, supportive family who did everything they could to be there for me. Even though they were pissed off, even though they were so just not, they didn't trust me. They were scared of what I might do next. Like, I, I, I could tell. I knew exactly that they were just not wanting that at the time. But at the same time, me doing what I did was a cry for help. During the times that I was, and I will say, trigger warning right off the bat, this is about mental health, so I should probably should have put that disclaimer in the beginning. But, um, long story short, when I was suicidal, that was also, like, a cry for help. And I feel like anybody that's suicidal, that is a definite cry for help. And so, the solution to all of it, again, like I said before, it was my mom's decision to... One, get me off social media. Two, I was also um, brought to court with her. Um, it was like, you know, it's it, it was scary to have my mom be like me versus my mom. Um, but it had to be done. It was basically she became my guardian so that I... I was not mentally well to make decisions on my own at the time because of the stupid decision that I made. So because of that, my mom and I went to court and she got full, uh, she got guardianship of me uh, for a year. So then we could figure out what help I needed. And yeah, that was a big first step because she couldn't have been able to do anything for me unless we did that so basically <coughs> excuse me um if you're over the age of 18 you have to make your own decisions for yourself but because I was not mentally well at all during this time it was a decision and I also had to agree with it which I did because I love my mom very much and I knew at the time that it was best for me to make that decision um that basically she would make decisions for me and I was perfectly okay with that 
because I knew deep down inside even then that my mom helping me was going to save my life to save me from all the hurt the trauma the stuff that I've been through you know um and so that was a big first step was getting that done yes I was scared yes I was like wow I like my self-esteem was depleting because I literally just gave all of my decision making stuff when I'm a full grown adult basically kind of you know young adult um to my mom and a lot of people you know wouldn't want that but I look back on that now and obviously I'm like thank god I did that because I don't know what I would have done I, it would be a very hard process to go through going through it on my own and to have my mom by my side I was very grateful for that um so yeah there was that so my my self-esteem was low because I felt embarrassed you know being a 20 year old not on social media not having any friends at the time not um having not really having any you know job or not going to school even I was just kind of going day by day and working on me and literally my daily routine was wake up was taking care of my dogs that was a big part of my recovery process was um, working a lot with my therapist we you know wanted me to have a job in a sense during the day and for me my job was taking care of the house and the dogs so literally chore stuff um taking care of the dogs etc which I still do now um except obviously my mom is not here during the day she you know works a full pretty much full-time job uh works Monday through Friday nine to three whatever um and yeah so that's a big difference now is that I still technically do those same things because obviously someone needs to take care of the house um during the day or you know take care of the dogs and stuff and I don't do it all on my own like now it's like if my mom's home she'll feed them sometimes or I'll feed them or my you know or my mom will walk them I'll walk them most of the time um uh the house stuff like I don't do everything anymore it's more or less you know I voluntarily clean the house sometimes because I do like cleaning that is something that was a benefit of having that year um off social media because or two years off social media sorry it was the end of 2019 that I went back on social media but um for those two years I've grown the love of cleaning I don't know like now if I ever see a mess anywhere like I feel clouded in my brain and I just need to clean it and it also gets my body moving and such so that was a huge benefit that I gained from doing that but another benefit that happened during my day-to-day -day life um back to, in 2017 was I did a lot of art journaling I literally had this like thick book um of just blank pages in it um and I decorated the cover and everything and I literally art journaled I art journaled my feelings out into it I literally made artwork that there was some dark things I will admit that there was some happier things stuff about music stuff about like literally all of that so it's like it was a lot and um art at that time was really helpful for me to do and now I do art on a regular basis both for like to you know vent out my thoughts but also to just create for the world now I have star sketch which I have been doing now for about two years um which is crazy that I've been doing star sketch for two years so art really was a way for me to cope with my feelings and also now I share it with the world but at the time I didn't share it with anybody I just kind of did it and that's when I kind of figured out my purpose that was creating artwork um 
and creating videos and that was one thing I did miss throughout um that was definitely creating YouTube videos because I was still watching YouTube um that was one thing I was allowed to you know a boundary that I set was I really wanted my mom and I to work together and not be against each other of like her giving me rules blah 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 so we kind of worked together and one thing we agreed upon was YouTube was something that I really enjoyed so um literally I would watch YouTube on my tv or at my sister's tv whenever I would go over her house because I would you know nanny my nieces with my mom we would co-nanny type of a thing and um, that brought me really close to my nieces, which I am very grateful for. I feel like that that brought me closer to my nieces, for sure. I mean, I don't spend as much time with them now, but every time I see them, they're like, Auntie Erin, yay! <laughs> like, they're so excited. Um, and they love coming in my room and all my art stuff and everything. And, because it's crazy, because they were both bored like one after the other during the time of all this happening and I feel like that also you know I wanted I'm gonna cry probably saying this but during that time when my niece Kira was born um it allowed me to realize that I should be a good example for my nieces that I should you know I didn't want them to be exposed to how I was and I really needed to change and now my niece is five which is crazy because she was kind of this little being that's been with me ever since after that happened um it's amazing to see she's doing so much stuff and seeing her at five I'm like wow damn like I'm glad that I am the way that I am now which every time that I'm with her I'm honest with her if she asks like oh where's this person somebody I've dated before or something or a friend that I used to hang out with I I'd be honest with her I'm like oh I don't I don't hang out with them anymore and of course you know a typical child's question is like why and I usually say if it's a breakup I usually say we just don't talk anymore things didn't work out and that's okay and that's okay and you know I'm taking the time to work on me and that's okay and she's like oh okay <laughs> or if it's a friend I haven't you know I didn't you know we had our troubles whatever and they ask um they don't typically ask all the time they don't know all their names but like if it was somebody that they knew that they met before or something um and they ask I usually say you know we just we weren't meant to be as friends and I'm looking for new friends you know I do it's like a lot of positive you know not like oh like I'll spill the tea to my nieces <laughs> thing like imagine if I just like said like oh she called me a bitch and called me this like no no um that allowed me better boundaries when it came to communicating things to people especially with age and all of that but anywho, before I go on a rant about my nieces, I just love them to death. And I feel like that was a big part of, you know, then versus now is now I take, you know, everything I do around them. I make sure that I'm not, you know, I do have my moments. I have my anxiety moments, you know, and I get overwhelmed easily sometimes, but I do my best to do my coping skills which is either walk away um if I'm too stressed out or um go to my room and do something with them in my room because my room is my sp safe space whatever the case may be um you know it's all situational and um so another thing that happened during my mental health then uh during my day um I would go on walks with my dogs and I would play Just Dance on my Wii and I still do those things now um but I think you guys get the gist on how my mental health was then I was off social media you know just kind of living day by day almost not really I had structure kind of but like not really I did I had a lot more structure then because 
of the fact that I was doing so many mental health groups, activities, online stuff, um, my art stuff. I did like a DBT, dialectical behavioral therapy group that met every Monday um, or Wednesdays or whatever that were all girls. And, you know, I did all that and I did meet people during that, but like they weren't like anybody that I still talk to now or anything. Um, and I did some mental health programs and stuff like that, but and I'm not saying I'm perfect now. That's something I don't want to relay in this message because, my God, I still made mistakes. Even after 2017 and 2018, I went to this program and I got kicked out. That was a whole story, story time that I don't think I want to share to the internet. But, and I'm ashamed that I did what I did. But at the same time, you know, I, I'm not saying that I'm perfect. And I am saying, though, that my mental health now has significantly improved for sure since that time but again I do have my bad days there are going to be days that I you know I'm so overwhelmed that I have like a freak out but I'm not gonna like make a poor decision and take a bus and run away from my family no now I know better and now I know that if I have an overwhelming time or if I'm freaking out I tell my family and they're like okay go to your room and, you know, chill out, you know, and they understand. Or now I also utilize the Mary Jane. <laughs> that is something that I never did before. And I feel like I definitely have gained the benefits of it. Uh, but something I am currently working on is making sure that I don't smoke when I'm not feeling great because it's all about intention. And I can go on a totally different Erin Talks um, video, podcast thingy, um, all about, like, me smoking and how I balance it with my mental health and everything, so that could be a totally different video, but basically, to sum it up, I feel like my mental health has improved since smoking, to be honest, because I've definitely found a balance with it. I don't smoke it all day, every day, either. Um, I only smoke it at night, and I'm able to kind of, you know, have a balance with it it's more or less something that I look forward to after a long day's work or after a day of doing things then I can relax smoke my bong and you know do my thing <laughs> uh so it's all about balance and that's something I definitely have incorporated into my mental health now is balance you know if I'm on my computer for a long time editing a video or uploading stuff or just doing computer work whatever it may be um, and I start to get a headache after two hours, I get up and I go outside and I do something outside. So like, for example, after I film this video, I'm 1010% going to go outside and journal and do some things outside because I've been on my phone filming for a very, very long time. I mean, I still text message people, but it's not like I'm inside doing it. Like I make sure that I get outside and that's a big thing now that I try to incorporate is just a lot of balance. How much time have I spent inside today versus outside? That's like one balance thing that I like to do. Or how long have I been at my computer versus doing a non-online thing like creating artwork or doing a tarot reading or journaling or something. It's all about balance and that's a big thing that I incorporate now. Especially, you know, I'm on social media <laughs> a lot and most of my social media things that I post on Instagram, TikTok, all of that relate to Star Sketch now. And it's not like me just posting random stuff. Like they're all intentional or, you know, for fun or whatever. It's not, you know, to gain attention from men or to, you know, whatever that I used to do back in 2014, 2015, 2016, 2017. No, not 2017 because that's when I was off. So between 2013 and 2016, I would just do things to get attention. But now things are more intentional and it's because I've turned my social media into my business. But my YouTube, I do fun things still every once in a while. And that's why I love YouTube is I'm able to do some things about Star Sketch and do stuff that I enjoy talking about, like mental health and spirituality and stuff. So like I said before, it's all about balance. And that is definitely a word that I incorporate every single day when it comes to my mental health currently. Also at 2017, I forgot to make this 
difference here in 2017. Um, I was on medication, but now I am on medication that's definitely bumped up and it's definitely a lot better for me. I think taking the dosage that I do now versus then is definitely better. Um, I will say that I've had my ups and downs when it comes to psychiatrists. I am not currently with a psychiatrist anymore. In 2017, I was. But now, I don't have one. All I have is a therapist and my doctor. Um, but that's what works for me. And what works for you works for you. What works for me works for me. So definitely give uh, psychiatry a try uh, if you haven't. Um, if that's something that you've been thinking about because... I'm not saying I'm not bashing it. It's just from my personal experience with the psychiatrist that I work with, worked with, I should say, I had bad experiences, honestly. Like it was just, ugh, I didn't like it. So I like my system now. Um, plus back then in 2017, I had a huge mental health team. I had a nutritionist, a freaking um, companion person that would take me out places. I had, you know, my therapist still my psychiatrist at the time I had a like job coach person I had um like just like a mental health coordinator person like I had a bunch of people but now currently present day the only people I consider on my mental health team are my DDS worker um shout out to her she's great um who I work with on a quarterly basis basically every like three to four months we see each other just to check in basically um I meet with my therapist once a month and I see my doctor once every six months um one of them um every year is my physical and then the other one is always a six month check-in for just my mental health it's just required with this doctor which I don't mind so like for example I've just had a physical last two months ago sorry and then in December, I will be going in, um, or was it last month? It might have been last month, actually. Anywho, um, in December, I will be doing, like, my mental health check-in thing. So, and that's been working for me. And I feel like having a small mental health team now has been a lot better because now I feel a little bit more independent. I'm definitely a lot more independent than I was back in 2017 as well. Um, that is definitely a big one that has changed. Um you know, my job is Star Sketch. I still do get disability, which I have been on for five years now. That was something I started back in 2017, and now I've been on it for five years, and it definitely helps. Um, and, you know, I can kind of create my own schedule now, now that my mom isn't here to kind of watch over me. I kind of, you know, make my own decision. Do I make the decision to be on a live streaming app all day or am I productive and doing like I did today laundry showered uh clean bed sheets etc and I choose more or less unless like I'm going on live on TikTok or Instagram or something for like maybe an hour tops on those for star sketch 99% of the time I am choosing the productive route I just I'm sick of the drama. I'm sick of being on sites to make friends because that was something I was addicted to and I did go back to them I will say after I was back on social media but like at the same time I just I don't it doesn't make me a good person it makes me attract people that are definitely not on my same vibe and I want to attract people that are on my same vibe so instead I just don't go on those apps and I just stay with my little circle which is my two best friends Chris and Jamie shout out to you guys um and also my boyfriend now uh who is very loving supportive and our one month is coming up next week which is insane because I feel like I've known him longer but we've just been talking for so long and then we finally started dating and everything but you know um and I of course have my family who are like also technically like my best friends like I love hanging out with my parents I love talking to my sisters and my brother even like just overall another difference is a better relationship with family we spend a lot more time together and it's not like I regret it or anything like it's like quality time spent honestly 
Um, I don't think that there's any other similarities or differences. But again, if you guys want me to go into anything more in depth that I did talk about in this video, podcast, arid talks thing, um, definitely let me know in the comments down below because I would love, love to know what you guys want to see more of when it comes to these Erin Talks videos. Uh, but yeah, I think that's pretty much it. And that is my mental health then versus now. Um, oh, one last thing is I'm still diagnosed with anxiety, depression, OCD, autism spectrum disorder. All those diagnoses are still the same. I'm not like coming out here being like, oh, I also have this or, oh, I don't have this anymore because I'll probably have these things for the rest of my life. It's just how I kind of cope with them. And for me currently, I'd rather be productive, that girl era <laughs> kind of a thing, um, and just be overall, just be myself because there's nobody better than being uniquely you. And that's something that I've come to embrace is that I may be just a little bit different. Yeah, there's sometimes I feel like an outcast, but I am who I am. And there's people that love me for that. My family, my boyfriend, my friends, you know, it is what it is. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, let me know again if you have any ideas for Erin Talks videos based, if there's anything that you wanted to branch off from this. Let me know in the comments or any other ideas that you have that you want to hear me talk about. Uh, just let me know. And I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, this was a, you know, very sensitive topic to talk about. But I feel like it's important to sometimes, you know, look back a little bit. Think about yourself. Um, I kind of want to add at the end of every Erin Talks episode something that you guys can either discuss in the comments or in your journal or just something to kind of inner reflect on yourself is compare yourself from five years ago. So 2017 you to now, like I just did, but with your whatever, it doesn't have to be with your mental health. It could just be in general where you were then versus now, the growth that you've had, the things you've experienced, everything. Um, it's crazy how much things can change in just as little as five years. So yeah, uh, feel free to do that and let me know down below if you want to share anything when it comes to that. If not, feel free to just keep it to yourself. Um, something to kind of reflect on and maybe, you know, you want to plan what the next five years will look like. That's actually kind of intimidating to me because by that time I'll be in my 30s which is crazy. But anywho, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, let me know what you thought of the episode down below and I will see you guys all in the next Erin Talks video or video in general or wherever I see you. Bye guys!